If you were asked to name the best console for 2D gaming in the late 90s, which one would come to mind? Well, I think it's more than fair to eliminate the N64 from the start, and chances are you'd probably go with the Sega Saturn, which has a reputation for its great library of 2D games. Titles like the Sega developed platformer Stall, and Atlas's action RPG masterpiece Princess Crown are some of the most gorgeous looking games I've ever played, and are prime examples of what the system could do with sprites. Additionally, the extra dedicated 2D processor and RAM expansion slot helped beef up the look and performance of 2D games made for the Saturn. In my opinion, however, Sony's PlayStation is definitely a contender, as it was also host to some really great 2D games. Most of the best 2D Saturn games weren't released in the West, but received more exposure abroad, mostly due to the ease of importing games for the system. The PS1, on the other hand, had a very strict regional lockout policy, and many of the gems for the system are much less well known than its 32-bit rivals. I've already talked about a few great 2D games available for the PS1 with the series, such as the shooter Gunner's Heaven and the beat-em-up Neketsu Echo. And today I want to bring up another one, the 1999 action platforming game, The Adventure of Little Ralph. Developed by the relatively obscure New Corporation, and also known by its Japanese title, Chippoke Ralph no Daibouken, the game has a graphical and gameplay style that is highly reminiscent of the classic side-scrolling games that came before it. The story revolves around the titular Ralph, a young man who lost his parents at a young age and was brought up in the town of Kasua with another orphan named Luticia, who has the mysterious ability to use magic. Under the threat of a terrible army of bloodthirsty demons, humanity is truly in its darkest hour. Ralph, quite the able swordsman, sets out to confront this menace and defend his town in Luticia, and word of his prowess makes it all the way to Valgo, leader of the demonic horde. Valgo takes it upon himself personally to encounter the young man, but before any actual fight can ensue, the demon general uses a powerful spell that transforms our hero into a young, defenseless child. Before a killing blow can be struck, Luticia uses her magic to protect Ralph, and is kidnapped by Valgo and his minions for some unknown, nefarious purpose. Ralph, left utterly defeated and without hope, is suddenly visited by the Holy Sword, a sentient weapon of legend who is said to appear only during times of incredible crisis. The sword beckons the boy to take hold of him and save the damsel Luticia, and thus, the adventure of Little Ralph begins. This game uses a very simple control setup, with only the D-pad and two face buttons being put to use. The square button performs a sword attack, and X makes Ralph jump. Holding down the square button will charge up a swing attack, which functions much like kicking a turtle shell in Super Mario Bros since it knocks foes away and kills anything in his path. This move can be used to hit projectiles back at certain enemies too. Ralph can also perform a downward strike, similar to Link in Zelda 2 for the NES, by holding down the D-pad and attack button while jumping. Both of these attacks are essential to master if you want to progress through the game in one piece. Most bosses are fought as Little Ralph using this control setup, but there are several key battles where the power of the Holy Sword returns him to his original adult form. In these sections, gameplay is radically changed, and fights are played out like the classic 2D fighters of yesteryear, which is awesome. If you've ever played Street Fighter 2, you'll immediately be familiar with controls, though you only have to deal with two attack buttons, one being fast and weak, and the other being slow and strong. There are no time limits, so victory is achieved only when your opponent's health bar is completely drained. Even though these fights are but a small portion of the overall game experience, there's a surprising amount of depth to the fighting system in AI. Ralph will travel to a great variety of locations on his adventure, and each level is distinctly its own, with no two areas looking alike or playing the same way. A neat little touch in the adventure of Little Ralph is that transitioning between levels and stages is seamless, as the screen never blacks out and Ralph just moves from one area to the next. This gives the impression of one large game world and makes the quest seem truly tireless and urgent. No downtime like the popular heroes of other games. Get up off your asses and kill some things! Each stage has a set starting and ending point, but oftentimes in between these are branching paths to explore which may or may not be so apparent. The background art is quite fantastic, with a lot of nice graphical details placed all throughout the game. To only talk about a few of the levels, there's the introductory town stage, which is a large sprawl taking place inside buildings and outside on the streets, as well as on the rooftops high above the city. There's a lush forest level that's home to beautiful waterfalls and intricate Maya-style temples that culminates in a heart-pounding underground minecart ride through fire and brimstone. As is pretty standard for platformers, the adventure of Little Ralph has an ice level, where you'll find an exquisite icy stronghold complete with slippery floors that are hard to keep your footing on. 
Finally, I'd like to mention an Egyptian-themed pyramid level inhabited by mummies, walking hieroglyphs, and jackal-headed gods, which is preceded by a desert complete with ancient ruins and enemies that look like they're straight out of- OH MY GOD! I guess this would be the most appropriate time to mention the difficulty of the adventure of Little Ralph. It's a tough game that will put your reflexes, patience, and gamer credentials to the test, but without ever feeling unfair in the process. Control is tight and nearly flawless, and while there is a tad bit of trial and error necessary when playing for the first time, it's ultimately the skill of the player that determines success. Ralph will die from just a single hit, no matter how big or small it may be. There are so many paths to death on this adventure. Take a quick look with this brief montage, The Many Deaths of Little Ralph. Well, if you ever wanted to see a small child die in a number of horrifying ways, now you know there's a game out there to meet your sick, twisted needs. To help cut down on the death toll of our little hero, there are a number of power-up items that can be picked up to make the journey more bearable, but not by much. There's a blue sword that extends attack range slightly, a red sword that adds a fire shot with each slash, a familiar type character who follows Ralph around and aids him by plopping out little explosives in a small arc, and a shield which will create an orb that absorbs the damage from a single attack. In addition to these, there are a lot of other items that will increase score or lives. Unfortunately, any death results in the loss of all collected power-ups, so don't get too attached or too dependent on them. Thankfully, the frustration factor is cut down quite a bit due to the surprisingly generous amount of checkpoints the game returns you to upon dying. In total, there are 8 levels in the adventure of Little Ralph the option between two difficulty modes, normal and easy, as well as a few nice bonus features. Easy mode allows Ralph to take one extra hit from the start of each life, and in the ice level, there's a pair of boots you can find that negates the slippery effects of the floors. However, I would strongly suggest you play on normal from the start, as reducing the difficulty has one major deal-breaking catch. Easy mode ends the experience early, at level 5, and completing it rewards you with an unsatisfying, mediocre ending. You're also denied access to what are arguably the three best levels of the game and an interesting plot twist. The game is set to easy by default and must be changed in the menu. Make sure you do this before starting up a new adventure. Playing the game for the first time took me about three hours to complete, all in one playthrough and on the normal difficulty setting. A good chunk of that time was spent struggling against the final boss as well as a certain section of level 8, which is host to some of the most demanding platforming maneuvers I've ever seen. There's an unlockable two-player versus mode that allows you and a friend to duke it out using Adult Ralph or any of the fighting game style boss characters, which probably won't keep anyone's attention for too long, but it's nice that the developers included it. For score junkies, you can always check your game record. Things like how long it took to clear certain stages, and how many continues you used up doing so. And finally, you can switch the game music from the normal PlayStation sounding tunes to a PSG sound mode that replicates the noises found in old school computers and consoles. This option, in addition to the graphical style and tough as nails gameplay, certainly show that the adventure of Little Ralph was hit to the retro gaming revival way before the modern indie gaming scene. A little late to the party, eh? All in all, this game is amazing, one of the PlayStation's best, and I can't recommend it enough. i definitely rank Little Ralph up there among great people with Little in their names, like Little Mac, Little Richard, and Little Kim. But unfortunately, it's quite a rare game, and if you want a physical copy, be prepared to shell out a lot for it. As one of the more pricey PS1 titles, you'd be very lucky to pick it up for under $100 used. However, there is a way to play the game for cheap, and legitimately, which is to download it on the Japanese PlayStation Network. It's only 600 yen, or roughly 6 US dollars, 
so find a way to add funds to a Japanese PSN account and play it that way if you must. You can also download a few other great rare titles there too, like LSD Dream Emulator and Nakugaki Showtime. Anyway, I really hope you enjoyed this episode of Import Gaming for the Win, and as always, thanks for watching.